nursery is in need of a volunteer. If anybody is willing to go to the nursery, we we'll really appreciate it. You don't have to be such a certified. We need a volunteer to the nursery, please. Okay. Um, I just got information of someone that's already volunteered. Thank you.
Good morning, church. My name is David Cudi. Uh, I'm your worship guy this morning. Um, I have a couple of announcements, but before that, I'd like to welcome all of you to our sanctuary and to our worship service. Um, if I can do a seal name here, um, this is one of the best churches that you can ever attend. So if you're new, we'd like to have you as a member. If you would like to be a member, you can talk with the pastor. Um, by way of announcement, we have a couple of announcements. There are announcements in the bulletin that you can read. Um, for others, I will briefly pass those on to you. First one is that uh, we have a special uh, Christmas cake uh, lunch after service. We request that you please go down to the basement and enjoy. I've seen several of those. You won't regret being there, so uh, let us assemble down for the Christmas cake uh, lunch after worship service. Uh, we have corrections in the bulletin for the uh, Passover. It says that Thursday, March 29th, instead it's going to be Thursday, March the 22nd. We have a uh, living, we have the living last of supper, Moody Thursday on March the 29th at 7 p.m. instead. Um, We also have the, uh, the 16th annual uh, Walk of Good Works coming up. If you can volunteer, we we'll appreciate that. I've been to one of those. Uh, it's a rewarding and fruitful service that you can, you can uh, uh, participate in. As I said, the rest of the announcements are in the bulletin. Um, I will have anyone who has an announcement come up and make that one. I just briefly want to mention that most of you have a postcard in your bulletin about the show coming up on September, or September. Keep saying September. God, I wish we had until September to practice, but we don't. Um, February 24th and 25th at the Groveport Madison High School Auditorium. Um, this year's theme is That's Entertainment, A Sentimental Journey, taking you on a journey uh, through music from 1900 to present day. We've got lots and lots of, did I hear anything? So I'm hearing things too now. Uh, and, and, and it's for a good cause. We raise money. Um, a portion of our proceeds go to the Center for Groveport Madison Human Needs. Um, tickets are $10 for adults, $5 for children 12 and under. Um, we're doing three shows this year on the 24th Saturday, 1 o'clock and 7 o'clock. Um, and uh, on Sunday at 3 o'clock, Sunday afternoon at 3 o'clock. And uh, you just really need to come. A lot of us are involved in it. And it's a good chance to see Gary Hinkle as you've never seen him before. Uh, <laughs> okay? So we hope you'll come and support us. I, I do not have tickets with me today, but I have a sign-up sheet. If you want tickets, you can pay me today. We'll leave up a will call at the front desk for you or whatever. So just see me after service. <laughs> Thank you. 
earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world is all the poor living in it. For we have made it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. Who may ascend the hill of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? They who have clean hands and pure heart, they do not lift up their souls to an idol or swear upon his loss. They will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from God, his Savior.
humbly we make that our prayer that each new day we might walk closer to you. And each new day we might send your presence here, bringing to us your comfort and your hope, allowing us to know your peace, and allowing us to know the assurance that we face nothing in this life alone. As we put our faith and our hope and our trust in you. We come in this moment, oh God, lifting to you the petitions of prayer for each of these that we have on our prayer list, these that we have on these cards, oh God, those that we lift to you silently and quietly from our hearts. We just commend each one to you, oh God, and pray for your healing mercies in each life. We pray, oh God, for the families of these police officers who died in the line of duty yesterday and for all first responders as they seek to help in so many different situations. We pray your edge of protection around them. We pray, O oh God, for your blessing in their lives. We thank you, O oh God, for this time of worship and for an opportunity to praise you and to come into your presence. And we pray, O oh God, that in these moments this might be a time when we truly sense your nearness to us. We just give ourselves to you in this moment, in this time, in the holy and precious name of your Son, Jesus. It's in his name that we lift our petitions of prayer to you. It's in his name that together as the body of Christ, we lift our prayers in this moment, praying even as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is coming. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who Please come out. 
pray now that you'd accept these, our gifts, bless, and use them that they might further your kingdom here on earth. We offer them in Jesus' name. Amen.
we might find our true connection in Him, the one who is the true vine. Now hide me behind the cross of your Son, Jesus, O oh God, that in everything that is said and done, you would be seen and you would be heard. To begin this morning, I want to start by asking a couple of simple questions, but yet they are, in some respects, complex questions. Questions, perhaps, that we might not really want to deal with, we might not want to wrestle with, but they're important questions as we think about and as we deal with this particular I Am statement of Jesus, where he says... I am the true vine. The questions are these. The first is, who or what? Who or what are you connected to? Who or what are you connected to? And the second is similar to it, who or what do you abide in? Who or what do you abide in? Some time ago I read a statement that kind of shocked me and it said this. It stated that 70%, 70 percent, 70 percent of professing Christians speak of no real encounter with God. Now this is 70 percent of professing Christians speak of no real encounter with God. No real sense of His presence. At least not in a way that truly amazes them. One where they stand in kind of awe of God's presence. Seventy percent of professing Christians. This made me wonder how connected we truly are. Both as individuals and even as the church, is it possible that we're not as effective as we would like to be or we seek to be in ministries that transform lives, in ministries that help form faith in people's lives, in ministries that take us out into the community and beyond. In ministries that are about making disciples. Is it possible that it's not helping us in our prayer life or finding our faith journey fulfilled as we move through life because we don't have that connectedness? We're not somehow connecting or tapping into Jesus who says to us, I am the true vine. In essence, it comes down to how serious do we take Jesus' call to abide in Him? Do we understand the importance of not only abiding in Him, but being one with Him? Because actually it's one and the same thing. It's interesting, if you look at the words of Jesus in the 14th chapter, right before this 15th chapter that we heard read this morning, we find Jesus there talking about oneness with Him. In John 14, 1 and following, He says, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, trust also in Me. In My Father's house are many rooms, if it were not so, I would have told you. But I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And I will, if I go and prepare that place for you, I will come back. I will come back to take you to be with me. That you may be also where I am, abiding, if you will. <laughs> On down to the 15th verse of that 14th chapter, he said to his disciples, If you love me, you will obey what I command. And I will ask the Father, and He will give you another counselor to be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept Him because it neither sees Him nor knows Him, but you know Him, for He lives with you and will be in you. 
abiding. In the 18th verse, he says to his disciples and to us, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. And on that day, you will realize that I am in the Father. You are in me. And I am in you. Abiding. Now this brings us to the 15th chapter, to the words we heard read this morning, where Jesus boldly proclaims, I am the true vine. I am the true vine. He goes on to say, remain in me, and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. I am the vine, Jesus says. You are the branches. If a man, if a woman remains in me, and I in them, they will bear much fruit apart from me. They can do nothing. They can do nothing. As we come to consider this I am statement of Jesus, I want to share with you again the context in which Jesus spoke these words, because it's important for us to understand that it adds some oomph to it, if you will. Jesus and the disciples had just left the upper room, where they had celebrated the Passover feast. He had opened his heart to them, and he has taught them about his great love for them. He likewise shared with them that he would send the Holy Spirit who would teach them and lead them. And he gave them the great promise that because he lives, they would live also. He likewise gave to them the promise that they would be one with him. He truly was seeking to put their troubled hearts to rest because he had just shared with them that he was about to die. He was going to be crucified. He was sharing a good bit of this while they were en route to the Garden of Gethsemane. Their journey was one that took them secretly through Jerusalem and right past the temple. It has been suggested that it very well might have been that as they passed the temple precincts, that Jesus made this bold I am statement where he says, I am the true vine, and you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. This becomes significant in that over the entrance of the temple was the exquisitely carved gold leaf symbol of the vine. The branches and the grapes. No expense had been spared in creating this magnificent reminder to the people of their heritage and of their special calling. It was firmly rooted in scripture and tradition. For time and again is the reference of Israel being the vine. We can only begin to imagine what the disciples were thinking and sensing as they listened to Jesus proclaim in this very place, I am the true vine. I am the true vine. He is telling them in no uncertain terms that it is faith in Him, not in their Hebrew lineage, that was their source of salvation and their relationship to and with God. What we need to understand and come to terms with is that the very same holds true for us. 
It is our salvation, our very relationship with God does not come from who we are related to or what we have done. It comes in and through our relationship with Jesus Christ, the one who said to them, the one who says to us, I am the true vine. I am the true vine. It comes in our being found in Him by our abiding in Him, allowing Him to be the true vine in our lives and recognizing the fact that we are His branches. We are the branches connected to the vine, drawing our source of life and strength from Him and from Him alone. And that as we do, then we can bear fruit, Jesus tells us. It has been said that Jesus drives home the point that apart from Him, we can do absolutely nothing. There's no joy without Jesus abiding in us. No real joy. There's no hope, no real hope that sustains us without abiding in Jesus. There's no peace, no real peace that passes all understanding, a peace that even when the storms of life are coming against us, we can stand in the midst of that peace without abiding in Jesus. And there's no life, no eternal life with Him without abiding in Him as the vine. <coughs> if we really want any of these things, then we must have Jesus indwelling in us. When the Lord lives in us, and He fills us with an abiding experience and realization that we are truly loved and cherished and valued, then we find our true purpose. In Him we know, as the old poster says, that we are somebody because God doesn't make any junk. We are His. You see, when we can rest in this assurance that He is the vine, that He is the source of all life, then we can face anything that we come up against anything at all. Because we can draw our strength from Christ who is the vine and who nourishes us and who strengthens us day by day, week by week, month by month, year by year. He strengthens us as the branches who find our connection in Him, the true vine. It is from the unlimited source of grace, rooted in what Jesus did on the cross for our forgiveness, for our salvation, that we might know reconciliation, that we might know the assurance of life in Him. It helps us to move on. There's absolutely no way that we'll ever have a sense of any of this until we are found abiding in Jesus, until we recognize that He is the vine, we are the branches, and apart from Him, we can do nothing. Now Jesus in this passage speaks of pruning. And let's be honest, none of us want to hear about a pruning process in our lives. But we need to understand that while it is true that the Lord loves us, it's likewise true that that love means that there will be times when our lives need to be pruned. Bev and I love to grow flowers, and we enjoy very much the beauty of them, but we're aware that there are times, and any of you who grow flowers or vegetables or whatever, you understand that there are times when they have to be pruned if they're going to continue to grow and be productive. When I was in high school, I worked for Bev's dad. He was a greenhouse grower. He owned greenhouses and he grew tomatoes. And we would work regularly trimming those hundreds and hundreds of tomato plants. Pruning them back so that they would grow and that they would grow more fruit and they would be productive. 
There were times, many times, when we were in the midst of that pruning, not only pulling off the dead leaves and the like that were not going to help that plant whatsoever, but were drawing off of it. There were suckers that would come off in between those branches, and you'd have to break those out because they were going to take more strength from that plant. And if it was going to produce good fruit, it had to be pruned on a regular basis. You couldn't just say, well, I think I'll leave them go for it right now. In fact, it was one of those processes that by the time you got to the end, you started right back where you began. Because they were ready to be pruned again. The same is true for us. If we do not have our spiritual lives pruned from time to time, it affects our spiritual lives. It affects our growth spiritually. And it also affects our productivity as a people of God, as the branches that Jesus says He wants to produce good fruit. While the pruning process in our lives is often an uncomfortable time, it's likewise one that has to happen, it has to happen if we're going to continue to grow. In verse 11 of that 15th chapter of the Gospel of John, we also find an answer as to why it is so important for us to abide in Jesus, the true vine. Jesus tells his disciples and he tells us, I have told you this, all of this, so that my joy my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. Is it possible? Is it possible that we fail to experience the joy, the life, the blessings that God intends for us because we fail to seek to abide in Christ? Now I go back to part of what I shared in the opening statement. If you remember, 70%, 70% of professing Christians speak of no real encounter with God. Now I don't think that means to say they never had a real encounter with God. But it's one that they don't sense in an ongoing basis on a daily walk with the Lord. And is it possible that they know the importance in their heads of Jesus being the vine and the importance in their heads of being connected to Him as the branches? But somehow it just escapes them of doing something about making sure that they're abiding daily in an ongoing way. I think this is why it's so important that we understand the importance of a, of a daily devotional time, of bringing ourselves intentionally into the presence of God. Now, yeah, we've all said, oh, I, I pray on the run. I pray while I'm doing this. I I do these kinds of things while, while I'm in the process of doing other things. And yeah, we can pray while we're doing other things. We can think about God while we're doing other things. But when do we ever just take the time to be still and to know that God is God and to say, God, this is your time. This is you and me time. <clears throat> Nothing else is going to interfere in these moments. And I'll be honest, it's hard sometimes because we've got all these things in our head that we need to do. And I don't know about you, I have found that my day kind of goes awry when I push that God time to the side and say, I'm going to go ahead and take care of these things. Instead of saying, God, this is our time right now, your time. And then I'll go about those other pieces. They'll still be there. They're not going away. And I'll care for them when we're done. 
We all know what happens when a branch is broken off of a vine or a trunk. It withers and it dies because it has no source of life or strength to draw from. Jesus is telling us in no uncertain terms that the same is true for us. And you see, friends, when we don't seek to take the time to be in that abiding presence of Christ, to take the time to draw our strength and our very life from Him, we're going to begin to wither and die. We're not going to be productive. That's why Jesus says it's so important to understand that we are the branches connected, connected into the vine. The question for each of us here this morning is this. Do we sense, do we sense an urgency to be connected to Christ, who is the true vine? Not just in our heads, but in our hearts as well. Do we realize that without Him, that without Him, we are spiritually dead and separated from God? But with Him, with Him, we have life and we have relationship with God and we have it abundantly. Do we realize that the joy that we so often seek the blessings that we want to know from God. But somehow, too often seems to elude us, can only be found in Jesus who says to us, I am the true vine, abide in me. Abide in me. Do we realize the need of the connectedness? Or do we just simply take it for granted? and find ourselves in that 70% of professing Christians who say, I know about a relationship with Jesus. Yes, I accepted Christ into my life, but I don't really have any real sense of, of His presence in an ongoing way, or a way that makes me go, wow. Jesus says to the disciples, He says to us, I am. I am the true vine. Remain in me. Remain in me. And I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. <coughs> I am the vine, Jesus said. You are the branches. If anyone remains in me, and I in them, they will bear much fruit. For apart from me, apart from me, you can do nothing. You can do nothing. I pray that we hear Jesus saying to us, I am the vine. And you are the branches. And I want you to be fruitful, so abide in me. Stay connected to me. That you might be fruitful. That you might know blessing. That you might know life. As we come to the Lord's table this day, we celebrate Christ who is the vine, who offers to us his very life, who offers to us his grace and his mercy anew. And I pray that as we come to the Lord's table this day, we sense that connectedness, that this becomes one of those moments when we since God's presence, not only in our own lives, but in the life of us together collectively as the body of Christ. Will you pray with me? Well, God, we give you thanks and praise for your son Jesus, who is the true vine. 
And we pray forgiveness, O oh God, for those times when we have not abided in Him. When perhaps we've sought to go it by ourselves and our own strength. Only to find that we are withering and literally dying spiritually. Help us, we pray, to find that connection this very day, in this very moment, as we come to this His table. May this be a celebration anew of the mercy and grace that redeems us and that connects us, not only with Him, but with you. We pray your blessing on these elements, O God, and we who come to partake of them, as we give ourselves to you, anew in the name of your Son, Jesus, in whose name we come to you, in whose name we pray. Amen. I'm going to ask the communion stewards to please begin to come forward as they do. This is an open communion. It's open to any and all who have received anew the wonder of God's love, God's grace, and God's mercy. We're going to be receiving communion this morning by intention, where we'll be invited in a moment. We're going to begin in the balcony and then come from the back of the sanctuary down the two aisles and return on the outside. If you need the elements brought to you, we will gladly bring those to you. We're going to be breaking a piece of the bread off and dipping it in the cup and then partaking. We remember how on the night that he was betrayed, Jesus took bread and he gave thanks for it. And he broke it. And he said, this is my body that is given for you. Take and eat this. And when you do, do this in remembrance of me. He likewise took the cup and he gave thanks. And he said, this is my blood. It's the blood of the new covenant that's shed for each and every one of you. That you might know that your sins are forgiven, that you might know newness of life. Take and drink it, he said. And as often as you do, do this in remembrance of me. We likewise have gluten-free elements that will be available here in the center. The Lord invites you to this table.
Again, oh God, we give you thanks and praise for Jesus, who boldly said, I am the vine, you are the branches. Abide in me. Help us, we pray, oh God, to each new day of our lives, to do everything we can to abide in him. Truly, we might bear you fruit in his name. Thank you. 